Welcome to Combat and Survival Weapons Employing the BAR. In this series of uh, videos, what we want to do is take a look at different support weapons, be they automatic rifles, light machine guns, medium machine guns, general purpose machine guns, or heavy machine guns. And what we'll do is start with the BAR otherwise known as the Browning Automatic Rifle. One thing a lot of people don't know about employing the BAR is there's a lot of variations of the BAR, but there's two main families of them. One family is the FN BARs, which were made in Belgium. They're all made to metric specifications. The BARs made in the United States are made to inch specifications. So while these weapons look the same, they don't employ the same parts. And in particular, they don't employ the same magazines. As we get into the nitty gritty of this, we'll talk about different magazines and versions that exist. The original BARs, as outlined in the American 1918 series of BARs, was an automatic rifle, which means it had a fixed barrel. And the fixed barrel limited the amount of firepower you could generate because the barrel would overheat. If you didn't shoot the barrel out, what would happen is once it started expanding, you would see tracer rounds starting to tumble, which meant the rifling wasn't engaging them anymore. And as long as the barrel was overheated but not shot out, you could let the barrel cool down and once it returned to normal dimensions, it would engage the uh, bullets again so that they wouldn't tumble. There was a lot of issues and complaints with this. So some of the later models of the BAR, whether made by FN in Belgium or by Colt Firearms, Later versions employed a quick change barrel which moved the BAR into the light machine gun category because then you could quickly change your barrels and apply some form of sustained fire. The barrel change techniques are different between the FND BAR which the version I have here is a FND BAR with a quick change barrel. The Colt R75 series with quick change barrels uses a different change mechanism. When you're looking at using forged weapons, battlefield recovery, the two series of guns you're going to run into most is the US 1918 series and the FN series. The FN series consists of the FN30 model, which is a fixed barrel, and the FND, which is a quick change barrel. The FND was made in five calibers. 7.65 Mauser, 7mm Mauser, 8mm Mauser, 30 alt 6 and also 7.62 NATO at the end of the production run. The magazines between the inch and metric FALs don't interchange. The quick way to identify them is the metric magazines, as you can see here, they have a reinforcing stamp in the shape of an X in them where the inch versions don't have this X stamping. The later model of FN BARs that were cham chambered 7.62 NATO, they had a modified trigger mechanism that used the metric FAL magazine. Now, one thing a lot of people don't realize is the FN 30-06 magazine is a different size than the FN metric magazine, which is made for 7mm Mauser, 8mm Mauser, and 7.65 Mauser. And what happens is your trigger group in the FN 30 and the FND has a spacer in it in this location if you're using a metric caliber versus a 30-06. One easy way to identify whether you have a metric version or an English version, inch specified, the FN series BARs have a dust cover here that goes over the ejection port, where the US 1918 series of BARs does not have this feature. 
early Colt BARs and commercial BARs didn't have this feature either, but as time went on in the 1930s, they incorporated this feature into ink inch version tolerance BARs. But that's a quick and dirty way to kind of take a look and see. Your FN30 and FN DBARs have a pistol grip where the 1918 series doesn't. Some of the Colt commercial inch models will have a pistol grip on it, but they're not as common and you don't see those as much as you see the military versions. When you're looking at weapons you're going to employ in the field and find in the field in battlefield recovery operations, the U.S. Inch pattern 1918 series BAR is going to be the most common chambered in 30 out 6. The next most common versions will be the FN metric versions chambered in 30 out 6, followed by 8mm and 7mm. You don't encounter many 765 versions. Most of those were used either in Argentina or they were used in Belgium. Now, one interesting point that I like about the Type D BAR, which this is a model of, because it uses a quick change barrel, if you buy a metric parts kit for 30 alt 6 and you buy a metric parts kit FND for 7mm or 8mm Mauser, you can swap them out on the receiver. The trigger group has a spacer for the 7mm or 8mm in 7.65, where in the 30 alt 6 it doesn't. So if you change this, you change the barrel, the recoil springs, you can use the same basic receiver and you can shoot five different calibers. The later versions of this gun that were made in uh, 7.62 NATO, they utilized a third type of trigger guard here and it employed a spacer so it could support using the FN FAL magazines in 7.62 NATO. Those were primarily used by Israel and in addition to weapons they bought from FN in that configuration, they took some of the weapons they captured from Egypt that were chambered in 8mm Mauser and converted those into 7.62 NATO using FAL mags. So in the United States, you'll see a lot of these FNDs in 7.62 NATO, 30 out 6, 7mm Mauser, and 8mm Mauser because most of the dealer samples that came in were chambered in those rounds. When I use this weapon, I have three 30 out 6 barrels I use, and the barrel change is pretty quick and rapid. What we'll do is uh, zoom out a little bit. The barrel change is pretty simple. When a carrying handle is deployed down like this, you push in on the catch and it comes right off. And then you put your fresh barrel on, clicks right into place. It's that simple and that quick. So you can see a quick change barrel in this gun gives you a whole lot more firepower that you can generate over a fixed barrel gun. And if you carry three barrels with you in the field and 20 magazines, you can uh, put quite a bit of firepower down range. And although you can carry and operate this weapon with one man, usually you have a machine gun team because you have one person carry its two spare barrels. And with this gun, I would rather employ it with 40 magazines where the gunner's carrying 12 and the two people supporting him carry the balance of the 40 magazines. That way they can be changing the barrels for you. They can be reload magazines, hauling your mags, and supporting you, calling out targets. Now one tip I want to give you here when you're buying spare barrels or replacement barrels for your FND BAR that you're employing, you want to make sure here that you have this locking collar. A lot of times you'll find these barrels in this locking collar with these interrupted threads will be missing. Now, I've rebuilt some barrels where I bought strip barrels and I would pull this collar and the handle assembly off the shot out barrel and put it on the gun. Now, I'm going to differ with most people and I like having the gas system on the spare barrel. 
a lot of times when you're employing guns in long-term sustained fire, you'll have issues with the gas system with the fouling and carbon buildup in it. So if you have three FND barrels that you're using with your BAR, you're distributing that gas over three cylinders instead of one cylinder. So it's worth the extra rate weight to have gas cylinders on all three barrels. And you can see here, this gas cylinder is not very big, so it's not going to add a lot of weight. The gas cylinder doesn't have to be massive. These are the three types of magazines that are employed in the FNBARs, particularly the Type D. We have a 30 alt 6 magazine metric, a metric 8mm and 7mm Mauser mag, and a metric FAL mag. Now one thing I'm going to caution you on is the L1A1 versions of the FAL are inch tolerance and the magazine retainer on the end here is different from the British Commonwealth magazines and the metric magazines that are using FAL. The Type DBAR modifications to use 762 NATO employ this type of magazine. They will not employ the British L1A1 FNMA fall mags. So you need to keep that in mind when you're looking at these. The FND only supports metric FAL mags in 7.62 NATO. It will not use the British L1A1 versions. You can see right here I've got these two magazines end to end and this one right here is the 7 and 8 millimeter Mauser mag. This one's a 30 out 6 mag and you can see the difference in height of the mags. You have to be really careful when you're looking at these magazines. If you're at a gun show buying them, make sure you're buying the correct magazine for the ammo you're going to be using. The dimensions are very close, but they're not interchangeable. Now what I'm going to do here is show you the fit of these magazines. This particular BAR is set up in 30 alt 6. This is a 30 alt 6 magazine. Fit in the gun. See how tight that fits? There's no play. This is a metric version of the magazine. And you can see the gap here. So when you're looking at these parts kits, there'll be a metal filler here for the 7mm, 8mm versions. You want to make sure that when you're putting together and working these guns, you got the right parts in them. And you can see the gap in here, right here. You see how much play this magazine has? Where when we put the 30 alt 6 one in, we don't have that. And just remember, the U.S. BAR magazines will not function in FN weapons. If you don't have this X stamped into the mag, it will not work in the FN versions. You've got to have this mag for the FN built versions. And then we got the FN FAL mag. And you can see here there is an even bigger filler that's used to support this magazine with the Israeli conversions you can see the gap in here that has to be filled. Now we've talked about parts interchangeability, magazine interchangeability, where basically there is none. If you're using a metric dimension FNBAR, you got to use metric parts on it. You have to use FN magazines. The U.S. BARs, you have to use U.S. produced inch parts, and you have to use U.S. produced BAR magazines. They won't interchange. Now, we're going to talk about ammunition usage in these weapons. All of these BARs are set up specifically to fire military ball ammunition. Most of them will not reliably function with commercial sporting ammunition. The reason is they have a different gas pressure curve and or they have a different overall length configuration and when you're firing an automatic weapon 
the ammunition in the magazine comes under surge. So you have a lot of magazine surge when you're firing an automatic weapon like this. And if the overall length of the cartridge is not sufficient to keep it in position in the magazine, the rounds will move forward and they'll stub and jam. And we're going to show you some examples of that here. What we have here is two magazines. This one is loaded with full metal jacket ammunition. This is loaded with sporting ammunition. And when you're looking at this, you can see how much free space you have in the magazine with the sporting ammunition because the bullets are shorter. Look how long the bullets are in this magazine. Their tips go almost all the way to the end of the magazine. So what happens is when you have magazine surge, I'm going to push these up to show you. When you have magazine surge, you can see that this full metal jacket goes up here and stops. This one here goes up and stops also. So let's look at the back of the magazine. You see how much free space is in there? What will happen is this round here will stub feed. So you've got to have full metal jacket military style ammunition loaded to the proper length. If you, find, if you get foraged sporting ammunition, the guns are going to jam. And if they have a short bullet length like this, you won't be able to fire very many bursts at all. You'll get, a, you'll get so many jams, you'll spend all your time clearing malfunctions. So you need to employ military full metal jacket ammo with his gun. And just to show you, we ran some tests. These were some of the issues we had with bolt would come forward crushed rounds. With this stub feed you can see where it stubbed the end and it pushed the round back into the case jamming the gun. Here we have another one where the round jammed. Stove pipe, the bolt crushed it. We got another feed weight jam. And what you have to remember, this is a 20 pound gun, so the recoiling parts are three to five pounds. And what it'll do is if these things stub, it'll just crush them. And this one wasn't too badly damaged. It just crushed the end of the, the bullet, but it still wouldn't feed. So what you have to remember when you're working with military weapons, you need to make sure you're feeding the proper ammunition in them. Otherwise, they're not going to run reliably. So that was a short summary of the Browning Automatic Rifle in the different versions. And if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. And we'll see you on the next video.